Hello, I'm Dr. Ashwadi and welcome to an introductory session on English language teaching. ELT is an integral part of PG curriculum in English around the world and a core subject for teacher education programs in English. Any course in ELT aims to introduce students to the basic concepts and principles of language teaching. In addition to this, it also includes schools of thought and their impact on language teaching, the role of social linguistics and psychology in the teaching learning process and different teaching methods adopted in ELT classrooms. Students will also be given an idea about classroom strategies, teaching aids, lesson plans to teach language skills as well as journals and literature. Last but not least, the procedures of testing and evaluation. This module, the introductory module that I have prepared, it focuses on two major points. The first one is general introduction to ELT and the second part is ELT in India. Under the general introduction to ELT, we will see how ELT can be defined. How did it begin? What predated it about people, institutions, ideas and practices that made up ELT? Under ELT in India, we will discuss problems and practices. And towards the end, I have also included some common abbreviations that you usually find in ELT textbooks. I will be presenting a short history, rather a selective history. A short history sh has to be short, isn't it? I will be just touching major events and leaving the rest for you to study, research, understand by yourself. ELT is often included under the broad realm of applied linguistics. It does not mean that all ideas of ELT come from applied linguistics. It is not true that teachers took ideas alone from applied linguistics and put them into practice. There is definitely a tradition of practical experience theorized by people who are not just teachers but revolutionized language teaching through classroom experience and problem solving. ELT, as said before, has interfaces with numerous academic disciplines like psychology, sociology, anthropology, and even information communication technology. ELT has been defined in various ways over the years. While I was going through the BBC teaching English platform, it defines ELT as the activity and industry of teaching English to non-native speakers. According to Collins Dictionary, ELT is teaching of English to people whose first language is not English. Cambridge Dictionary defines ELT as teaching of English to speakers to of other languages. Though ELT primarily concerns or ELT's primarily con primary concern is to address non-native speakers, it also deals with the language development of native speakers. To sum up or to have a comprehensive definition on ELT, I think this would be good. English language teaching or ELT is a broad term that comprises the various approaches, techniques and methods that are involved in teaching of English. To people with English as first language, that is L1, and also to those who use it as a second and also as a foreign language. L1 denotes first language, L2 denotes the second language. Now, let's discuss the evolution of ELT as a discipline. There are three phases in the development of ELT. The first phase is from 15th century to the 18th century. The second phase is from 18th century to the 19th century. And the third phase is from 20th century to the present. More than, more than 500 years ago, Latin was the dominant language of education in the Western world. In England, learning a foreign language was associated with the learning of Greek and Latin. It focused on grammatical rules, syntactic structures, rote memorization and translation. No oral use of language. Both Latin and Greek were taught for the sake of becoming scholars. As a result of the political developments in Europe, English got the better of Latin towards the end of the 15th century. Language teaching began in England towards the end of the Middle Ages when French died out as a second language of the country 
King Henry IV and Henry V of the Tudor dynasty stressed the use of English in the place of French. Early language teachers relied entirely on text and dialogue form consist of a series of questions and answers. Learning rested on rote memorization. Double manuals were very popular at that time, double manuals. The first of this was prepared by William Caxton and published in 1483. English language teaching was in the hands of refugee teachers in the Elizabethan England. Protestant refugees took asylum in England as Queen Elizabeth welcomed them for their skills and attitudes. Some of them occupied themselves in teaching English and French. Names of three refugee teachers needs special mention. Jacques Bellet, Claudius Holliband and John Florio. Jacques Bellet's contribution to the to English language teaching is his two books. One is The English Schoolmaster, published in 1580, and another one is Familiar Dialogues, which is published in 1586. So, English Schoolmaster gives a detailed account of English alphabet and pronunciation, while Familiar Dialogues is a collection of everyday dialogue and conversation. Claudius Holliband, primarily a French teacher, his contribution is high. And it, it is not related to the books that he's published, but it is related to the pedagogic expertise that he had in teaching languages. He introduced interactive approach, something that is very familiar to the educators of this era, that is from examples to rules or from specific to general, that is a procedure. And this was used in teaching grammar. Now to John Florio. John Florio, who was a private tutor to aristocratic patrons, published two double manuals. First Fruits in 1578 and Second Fruits in 1591. Apart from the contributions of few scholars, there was much activity in teaching of English. There wasn't much activity in the teaching of English until the middle of the 17th century. A new movement started to teach English grammar based on Latin. For more than 100 years, William Lilly's A Short Introduction, that is Lilly's Grammar, Royal Grammar, otherwise known as Royal Grammar, was taught in schools across the country. There was definitely, definitely a revolt against that. And the revolt against this mindless rote learning of roots of Latin and syntax, there were two schools behind it. One represented the humanist tradition by Erasmus and the other by the Puritanical philosophy with the publications of Advancement of Learning in 1609 by none other than Francis Bacon. Great scholars like Joseph Webb, Kaminsky, John Locke and others contributed to the development of language teaching in the 17th and 18th centuries. In the 18th century, interest in learning English increased considerably outside Britain. The early methods of ELT that is, the grammar translation method proved ineffective and overburdening both for the learners and also for the teachers. A reform movement started in 1882 with the publication of a pamphlet titled Language Teaching Must Start Afresh. It was by Vieta. The movement was supported by two academic scholars, Henry Sweet and Otto Esperson. Both these personalities are familiar to us. The movement was found on three basic principles. The primacy of speech, centrality of text, and the priority of oral methodology. It brought about a creation of new organizations such as the Modern Language Association of America, founded in 1883, the International Phonetic Association in 1886 and the Modern Language Association of Great Britain in 1892. In the 20th century, colonial with a colonial expansion of the British Empire, ELT migrated to different parts of the world. Association of Daniel Johns and Harold E. Palmer laid the foundation of ELT based on principles of applied linguistics and Practices of direct method, the next popular method of English teaching or ELT after the grammar translation method is a direct method. So they, they, both these personalities, Daniel Johns and Harold E. Palmer, they gave uh, base to the direct method. Daniel Johns, we are familiar, very familiar with uh, this personality 
who gifted us the English Pronouncing Dictionary, which was published in 1957, and Palmer's The Scientific Study and Teaching of Languages, which was published again in 1917, triggered the development of pedagogy based on oral methods. After the Second World War, that is in 1946, this year is important for ELT, the British Council started a publishing professional journal. It, is, it was titled The English Language Teaching. And the acronym ELT came into being after the publication of this journal. Later in 1972, it was renamed as English Language Teaching Journal, that is ELTJ. The independence of British colonies affected changes in the attitudes of learning English. These nations adopted their language policies. Some treated English as language for international communication. Some allowed it to continue it as a medium of instruction in schools and higher education, while some others changed over to their indigenous language. In 1970s, ESP, that is English for Special Purposes, evolved to meet the increasing demands of students, especially from third world countries for the adv advanced specific use of English in various disciplines like engineering, medicine, science, hospitality and technology. There was a flood of associations and centers like the British Association of Applied Linguistics in 1967, the American based Teachers of English to Speakers of Other Languages (TESOL), the English Teaching Information Center ETIC of the British Council and the Center for Information of Language Teaching CILT 1996. All these promoted ELT as a profession. Situational approach, audiolingual methods, silent way, communicative lang community language learning, suggestopedia, all were the new methods that emerged in the 1960s and 70s. For this first time, there was a shift of attention from teaching to learning and also from learner, from teacher to the learner. From the mid-70s to till now, the key concept that epitomized the educational linguistics and language pedagogy is that of communicative competence. And the approach is widely known as communicative language teaching. Today, ELT adopts eclectic method based on communicative language teaching, that is CLT, keeping the learner at the center of the teaching learning process. Now let's have a look at a few developments in teaching learning that directly and indirectly help the growth of development of ELT. Effective teaching learning has always embraced progressive methods of interaction. The history of the use of teaching aids can be traced back to as early as 140 BC. And with the use of GLOB by the Greeks, it had a long go passing through different phases like the Blackboard Revolution of 1800s, the radio and television boom during the Second World War years to the technological explosion of the new media in the 1990s. In the 17th century, Cominius, a bohemian educator, through his book Orbis and Sally and Pictures, for the first time introduced pictures to pictures into the teaching learning process or made use of pictures as teaching aids. In the 18th century, Rousseau and Pestalozzi, with their liberal educational views, advocated the spread of materials and methods to aid effective learning. Paul of Ayrou's The Pedagogy of the Oppressed, published in 1968, gave a new dimension to education by creating a new network connecting the teacher, student and society. It put to an end the practice of keeping teacher and learner in watertight compartments and alienating the learning process from the world outside the classroom. And learner for the first time became a co-creator of knowledge. With the emergence of constructive learning theories, there was a flood of learner-centered approaches with a teacher as a facilitator or as a stage setter or as a director in the learning process. In the constructivist classrooms, knowledge is constructed through meaningful transaction between the learner and the learning material rather than through the transmission of knowledge from teacher to learner. 
While analyzing history, current practices, and research in the field, it is apparent that with changing times, classrooms around the world with free will assured in reciprocal shift in methodological practices. So with this, I finish a general introduction to ELT. Now let me move on to the topic ELT in India. ELT in India. Initially, teaching of English in India was associated with Christian missionaries. As early as in 1759, missionaries were encouraged by East India Company to start English schools. John Miller's book, The Tutor, or English, A New English and Bengali Work Well, adapted to teach the native English. That's the title of the book, which was published in 1797, officially launched ELT in India. Charles Graham was the father of modern education in India. He introduced European literature and scientific knowledge to Indian students through English medium. Lord Macaulay's minute of 1835 gave a definite direction to promote learning of English language and literature, for establishing proper communication between the ruler and the ruled, and also to strengthen and improve native languages by borrowing Western nomenclature to adapt them to the study of sciences. By Wood's dispatch in 1854, the government supported the use of English in higher education in government offices and in courts. Our 200 years of association with English, privilege or not, is not easy to throw away. The place of English in education has been subject of debate ever since independence. The Kothari Commission of 1966 assigned a compulsory place to the study of English. English is taught in India as a language of comprehension rather than a literary language. To develop in learners the skills of comprehending English, especially the subject matter related to the specialized fields of study. The importance of learning English is summarized under four major heads. English is an international language for us, for international communication, for trade relations, passport, for global job scenario. It is a window to the world and also a library language and as a link language inside India because we have more than 100 languages and each state has its own language. So interstate communication is much done through English. There are four major basic aims of teaching English in India. To enable students to understand English when spoken, to enable them to speak in English, to enable them to read English and to enable them to write English. Though productive measures are adopted to teach English in India, the conditions under which English is taught and learned are sometimes far from satisfactory. There is still a persistent cry on the falling standard of English in India. Researchers in the field have pointed out some general causes of falling standards. Lack of clear-cut policy on the aims of teaching English. Then the dearth of competent teachers, wrong methods of teaching, defective textbooks, the faulty examination system, insufficient use of AVAs, overcrowded classrooms and the shortage of time are some among the many. In 1952, for the first time, the Madras English language teaching campaign introduced structural syllabus in teaching of English. In 1954, the first English language teaching institute in India was established in Allahabad. Central Institute of English and Foreign Languages, CIFL, was founded in Hyderabad in 1958. Regional institutes at Bangalore and Chandigarh followed it. In 2006-2007, CIFL was given central, the status of Central University and it was renamed as English and Foreign Languages University, that is FLU. ELTA, English Language Teachers Association, based in Madras, is functioning mainly to promote ELT in India. That is all about ELT in India. Hope you understood the history, objectives and practices and problems of ELT in India. Let me wind up with a few common abbreviations that you might come across while reading books on ELT. ELT, you know, is English language teaching, EFL, English as a foreign language, ESL, English as a second language, EWL, English as a world language, EAL, English as an additional language, ESP, English for specific purposes, EAP, English for academic purposes, TESOL, teaching of English to speakers of other languages. 
Hope this module helped you to get a better understanding of history of ALT and ELT in India. For further readings, please check the list provided. Thank you. We will meet you soon with module 2 on basic concepts in ELT. Till then, bye-bye.